Hey everybody, Haku here with my Tower of God tier list video. Um, I've been wanting to make one of these for a while. I know I've already seen a bunch of other people's and I've really enjoyed theirs and everything. Um, so this is just going up this week because I have two other big Tower of God videos that are kind of taking a bit of work uh, planned that I want to try to get done before hiatus is over and that'll be sooner rather than later, maybe? Um, so because of that, I just wanted to do this this week to give you some Tower of God content. Uh, and I'm really, really excited to do it. This is probably going to be kind of a chill video because I don't want to like yell too much and kill my voice because it's probably, probably going to take a while to do. Um, so I've watched a bunch of other people's. I don't know if Dr. Bonehead, if I've watched him do one of these, I know I watched his like him and other Joes, um waifu or best girl tower of god tier list but i don't remember if i watched just a regular one uh milios just did his recently and it was good um Niety hemmings has one that i've seen sun woos so i've seen a lot of other people's and some people's have taken them a long time to do so kind of feel like this is gonna be on the longer side i originally wanted to stream this but i think maybe because i'm not streaming it it can be a bit on the shorter side so i'm not like interacting with chat or anything i can focus up um also, huge thank you to, I actually took a, um, one of the, uh, one of the templates that was here, and I'm assuming this is who made it then, at Ajimu Best Girl, so huge thank you to them, because if not, I would have had to, I would have had to go through and uploaded all of the images of all of the characters myself, uh, so huge thank you to the person who did all this for me. Also, it seems like it's like legit every character, even some random nobodies that show up once and get one shot. Uh, so there, a lot of them will probably end up in the who um, category or tier, I guess. Um, I don't remember if there was anything else to say before I get started. So if there is, I'll just cut in in the middle of ranking these. Let's just get to ranking some of them. Uh, also, I just like, I don't want to rush, I want to talk about the characters that there are things to talk about with a bit. Um, but going through really quick first, just the tiers, we have who tier, and that's just for characters that are like, nobody, forgettable, why are they even here, not even really characters mostly. People that either haven't shown up enough for me to have any opinion on them, or who just showed up and got one shot and I doubt we'll ever see again. That's what who is going to be for. Uh, then there's effing terrible, who are just the worst characters. Um, definitely below average, the ones that are not great, but like not terrible. Uh, certainly not bad, or just the average whatever C tiers. Boy howdy, dem dare some good characters. Getting into the ones that are like a little above average. Awesome, sweet, the secret sauce, and then transcendental above all, and it's kind of bothering me that it won't put it on one line. Uh, but that's where I'm going to be ranking all of these. Uh, also, this is going to be, I've noticed when I thought about, oh man, where am I going to rank some of these characters? Um... I don't know how this will line up. I did a favorite characters video, my top 25 favorite characters. I don't know how this is going to line up with that because that video was based really, really heavily on like, I'll give two good examples. Calavon and Rachel were not on that video, but I think that they're great like villains, antagonists. So that was mainly focused on characters that I personally like, that I personally root for, want to see, want to see succeed, all of that stuff. Uh, but this is going to kind of be about that too. I mean, it's my personal opinion, but it's also going to take into account how good I think the characters are, just as characters. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a bit different than my favorite characters, but either way, uh, let's start let's start throwing some of these guys into some category. I won't go start to finish I'm just gonna like pick random ones. I think that might be a fun way to do it uh, And also just because I start off putting somebody in a category I'm gonna rank them from bottom to top in the categories, so they'll probably move around a bit uh, But we can start with an I see an easy one with another easy one beside them easy one 
with Gatto. Gatto is effing terrible. A horrible father, not like cool or fun. Some people did like his transformation. I guess they, they did look all right, but I wasn't huge into his design. I was pissed off every time he like, well, I mean, I mean, it only happened once, I guess, but when he killed, uh, what was her name? I don't remember her name. There was this one character that I was like, oh, she, I think it was like Roland or something. I was like, oh, she has a really cool design. And then Gatto kills her. So I was so upset. Um, also, yeah, he's just a terrible father. And I also didn't really like his storyline that much. Um, and it was mostly his fault that I didn't like it because like his way that he went about wanting to help his son really wasn't that great. It really wasn't the best way to help his son. And like seemingly in a way that most people could realize this. Uh, but I'll go for the other easy one beside him. Yama's got to be like at least sweeter secret sauce, if not transcendental. I'm going to put him at, I'm going to put Yama has the secret sauce. He's in there for right now. He's in double S tier for the beginning here. Um, Collar is who tier just because Collar wasn't really around enough to make any sort of an impression before getting wiped, you know? Um, ah, Kel Halam is here. Kel Halam, for me, is, uh, is up there with Yama. I think character wise, I don't really like his personality or backstory quite as much as Yama, but it's a bit up there. Uh, but I think he's super underrated and a super cool character. So I really do think he deserves to be, like, in in the running around there. I'm um, just picking more random ones. Let's go for this random nobody that I'm pretty sure that was the one Anak demolished. Oh, no. That's from um, Warion demolishing them in Crown Game, right? So just some random that gets demolished by Warion. This is another thing. I bet Dr. Bonehead from doing the... Um, from doing the Tower of God dub, probably knows like all of these season one characters' names really well. But some of these random ones that the only time we ever saw their name was in like the sort of different groupings listed, uh, I'm probably not even going to remember some of their names. Um, Fuchil, I actually kind of like Fuchil. I think he has a lot of potential, and I'm interested in what he's like underneath the mask. I think what puts Fuchil above some of Yisracha's other division commanders is that they don't really have a lot of character going, but we saw that Yama says, okay, they're young but talented. Yisracha says, oh, hey, I want you to fight Yama just to test you out because you're young and new. And there's actually been a little bit of storyline that's gone on with Fuchil, so I'm actually going to put them in B tier for now. Um, that's Illumic. Uh, Illumic's very, very whatever. I would say certainly not bad, but I'm also thinking about definitely below average. I'm going to put him in D tier just because I know he's one of the only two silver dwarves that we've seen that I know of, but at the same time, I just, I'm infinitely more interested in Evan. I don't really have any interest. He's a character that not only is he meh, but I'm, I'm never like, oh, let's go back and see what Illumic is doing. Um, also, I'm hoping that's actually Illumic, but I'm pretty sure that's from the scene where he first meets Yuri in the prologue to season two. Um, all right. So, oh God, there are so many. Let's go Verdici or Verdish either way. Oops. Um, Verdici, I really like. Like, this is a character that personally, I really, really like Verdici. So I'm going to put Sweet for now. She might drop a tear. But I'm going to put her there for just right now until we get some more characters on the board. Uh, this was one of the random guys from Workshop Battle. I think the one that got taken out by Varagarv. Uh, what was he? He was like something, the Conqueror or the Warrior. or He had some sort of title in his name like that. Um, Mule Love. I don't like Mule Love as much as a lot of other people. But I also like them a little bit. I kind of feel like there's... More I'd like to see in the future from possibilities from Fuchil than Love. But then again, I am interested in seeing Love going after whoever killed his parents. So I don't know. I, I feel like I don't like Love as much as a lot of other readers. But I do still like him. Oh, and then this is an easy one. This is Dewan, right? Easy. Effing terrible. I don't know if she's worse than... Ga she, mm, she's not worse than Gato. It's hard to be worse than Gato, but... 
No, Dewan is Dewan's awful. Um, oh, Anox Mom. Anox Mom is at least A tier. I love Anox Mom. All we all we saw was her in the backstory, but she just has such a great story, and her design is really really awesome. Both in the manhwa and the anime, they had her design a little bit different, but I thought she looked great in both. Um, but yeah, just another personal choice. Uh, let's see here. Dali. Dali's kind of bad. I don't know if he belongs in Effing Terrible, though. I don't know if he's that bad. He did kind of get embarrassed by a bunch of, uh, regulars. And, I don't know. It It's weird, because when I was reading Floor of Death, I was like, oh, he has such a cool design. I love his design. But then he was just... He was not that great. He kind of embarrassed himself a bit. Uh, Shibisu, at least... At least S or double S tier. Shibisu's got the secret sauce. Uh, I don't know where to put him here. Maybe there for right now. Not above Yama, I don't think. I love Yama. Yama might <laughs> Yama might move over here for me. Uh, this is another random workshop battle guy, I think. But the like fact that I don't remember him, he might have been in Revolution Road. The fact that I don't remember him, though, probably says what you need to know. Um, oh God, some of the like main characters, I don't want to get to quite yet because there's going to be like a lot more thinking involved. I kind of just want to knock out some of the ones that are kind of meaningless. Um, the guy that the anime turned into a Zoro reference, I'm going to put bottom of effing terrible because I didn't really particularly like him. He was kind of nobody in the uh, manhwa, but then the anime made him into the Zoro reference, which if it was like a one-time thing, it'd be like, oh, okay, funny, neat. But then they carried on with that a bit too much and also uh, kind of paid too much attention to him when we could have had some other side characters that the anime just decided to leave out. Um, let's see here. Kan Hong. I really like Kan Hong. I really do. Again, for some reason, she's a character that not many people like that much. I really like Kan Hong Glow. Not as much as Nox Mom, but I do. I think that I really want to see more of her and Lulu. If her and Lulu show up to be Bomb's team's allies some more in the future, I think it'd be really fun. Even though, again, they're not like, I mean, she did save Kun's life, but then again, at this point, I feel like a million people have saved Kun's life because he's always the guy that gets put in danger. I don't know. I don't know, A tier for now. I would like to see more of her, but I'm not really sure how much more use she could be to the story in the future. But then again, see who just did it recently by making her useful in the story. Um, Apple. Uh, some people make some good points about Apple. My, my like initial thought is, oh, I don't like her. Screw her. She's like, she's a bad guy, but she's not a bad guy that I think, oh, wow, they're cool even though they're a bad guy. Um, I don't think that about her character, but then some people are like, oh, but she had all this planning going on, she hacked Kuhn's lighthouse, she did all this other cool stuff, and that kind of makes me question my stance, but I kind of still feel like she's in an area where, A, she's a bad guy, and B, she's not a cool enough bad guy for me to like. Uh, we have Charlie. I wasn't a big fan of Charlie. I've softened on him rereading but I'm still not that big a fan of him. He's fun in his comedic bits. Ah, he's fun in his comedic bits, but I'm not huge into his design, even though it's grown on me. I don't know. Again, I, I think maybe top of D tier. Or no, maybe there. I'm, I'm considering moving a Lumic up to not bad. Uh, Warion, Warion is top tier. She's up there with Shibisu and Yama. I don't, Ah, in my favorite characters video, I put her above Yama, but I don't know if I'm willing to do that yet here. Again, Transcendental staying open for now until, like, I really start seeing where some of these other characters are going. Uh, that was either J or Wei, I don't remember which one. The Servants of Coolness Am K. Uh, Delete. I like Delete. I didn't think I would. I thought he was just going to be a jobber character with, like, a terrible name. But I ended up liking him a lot, and I think there's, I don't know, we don't need to ever go back and see what happened to him and Kane, but it might be kind of neat. Uh, I almost want to put him in A tier, maybe just top of B. And this makes me think about putting those two down in C tier. Oh gosh, see, this is getting difficult. 
Um, let's pick another random one. Prince. Oh, this is a hard one. Because Prince is a character that I liked a lot, but isn't really around anymore. Um, that's difficult. I'm, go I'm going to put him in A tier, but below Kan Hong, just because unless we see him get revived by White, which I don't see happening, Kan Hong has the more future potential. And I think that's what puts her above him. For now, for me. Oof, Casano, big oof. I'm not going to put him in effing terrible, like a lot of people probably would. I kind of understand his story, but it is kind of a letdown having him be, like, mysterious and, oh, what's his play when he's in a workshop battle? And then he just kind of, like, is like, oh, I'm going to change the world and I have this great power. But compared to other characters we're seeing, his great power isn't really all that great. He's, like, on par fighting um, fighting uh, Yiwa and Wang Nin when we're seeing characters like Daniel and Bomb and uh, Elliot right there with them that are like way stronger than that. So it's like you went through all this, screwed over your brother to get this power, and this power really, really didn't do all that much to help you. And then he just is like, oh, well, screw up, my plan failed. So that's where we ended up with. Uh, with him. So let's see where we're at. All right, let me get a sip of my drink so I don't kill my voice too much. Okay, so next one I'm going for is Colden. I see him down here. So Colden I'm going to also put in D tier. Uh, Kasuno I think has a cooler design. The reason I'm putting Colden here, again, he was just a character that we didn't get much of and then got destroyed. But he was introduced alongside Jordan, and from the very beginning, Jordan was so much better, uh, which makes him look even worse. Uh, going for another, oh my god, Levy. I almost want to put Levy in a high tier. Like, Levy almost has me think about putting him in a high tier just for the comedic value. He's such a good meme character. Like, there are very few good like Tower of God meme characters, I think, but Levy is one of them, where he was just so hyped up. He's one of the few regulars that are sponsored by Zahard. He's got this spell, and it seemed like CU was taking him really seriously as a character. But despite CU seemingly taking him very seriously as a character, he just got jobbed out and embarrassed by everyone. And I kind of love it. I kind of love that he was jobbed out because it made Rax seem cooler. It showed off Rax's new abilities. So I almost want to put Levy in a... I'm, I'm actually going to put Levy in C tier because he was so awful that it provided a lot of fun and a lot of jokes for the community. And it also led to making, I mean, Bomb seem cooler as if he needed it. And letting Rack seem cooler after Rack had taken a lot of ills, he got a W against Levy, who was built up a bit. So yeah, I'm actually going to put him in C tier. Just because he's awful, but at the same time, he, he provided a lot, I think, of entertainment for all of us. So yeah, I'm actually putting him in C tier. I was I was wholly expecting myself to put him in like effing terrible, but I'm actually convincing myself that his meme worthiness earns him a spot or two. Um, Gray, Gray I liked, but it's kind of whatever. She didn't really make it out of season one. We're probably never ever ever seeing her again. Uh, because of that, it's hard to judge. It's hard to judge characters that I know we're not going to see again. Uh, like some of the people that got one shot and stuff. It's hard to judge those characters. But uh, maybe somewhere around there in D tier. And I might rearrange some of these, move some of them up to C. But I'm going to put her there for right now. Pedro. I really liked Pedro as an arc villain. I thought he was pretty cool. I like his design. I like his character. Um... I would put him above love but below Fusil for now. Uh, let's see who else. This guy, random guy that got one shot. I don't even know if he had a real name. Um, then Akriung. Uh, Akriung goes in... We don't really know a ton about him. Uh, I would say I'm interested in seeing more of him. I totally am. So I'm going to put him below love in B tier. 
because he's a character that's kind of okay, whatever, but I kind of think he's above just meh, just from the fact that I want to know more about him, I want to see him more, etc. Okay, this was the Bell something, right? Belron, something like that. He was uh, one of the guys that Rack and Yeon fought that could eat lava, I think. Uh, oh, Dang Dang. Dang Dang, I think, goes in effing terrible, but he's he's not that bad. Most of the problems with Dang Dang I mentioned in my overrated characters video were that he was really, really hyped. <clears throat> Sorry, he was really, really hyped up in the story, and then he just didn't ever do anything, like ever. Um, so it's not really that he did things that were bad, he was just hyped up and the extremely little that he did didn't match up with how much he was hyped up or anything like that. Also, this guy, I threw him in here, but he's not worse than Gato. He's, mm, I don't know, maybe he's worse than Duan, actually. Duan actually might be redeemable in the future, but this guy is not going to show up in the future. Ding Ding isn't as bad as them, though, because, again, he didn't make actively bad choices in the storyline or actively detract from it. He was just extremely, extremely disappointing. Um, is this Song or Charlotte? This is probably Charlotte. Or, or no, no, Charlotte had a more feminine mask. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to put in who, because I obviously don't even remember them. Unless maybe they were Sanchez, in which case they had the fight with Yuri that was whatever. But I kind of feel like all of the Hell Joe servants either belong in effing terrible or in who, just for the fact that when we were introduced, I was like, oh, this is cool. We're getting introduced to them. They're going to be enemies for the regulars during this while the rankers go after the important people. But nope, one of them ended up fighting Yuri, but aside from that, the rest ended up doing basically nothing for the arc. I know Song led White and Karaka to the spirit room, but I also kind of feel like CU could have just written away for them to get there without Song. Uh, so I just saw Charlotte. Yeah, that's Charlotte. She goes there too. Um, Chonhee, I like, but not that much. Chonhee might be B -t or C tier, but better than Levy. Like, I like her backstory with Yuri, and that's basically it. I really like her backstory with Yuri, but that's basically all I got. Also, hopefully, now that I'm catching myself, hopefully I didn't say Yura a bunch when I was just talking about Yura in the floor of de or Yuri in the floor of death a second ago. Hopefully, I didn't say Yura a bunch there. But uh, yeah, either way, let's see who else we've got. So again, I'm trying to stick away from some of these like really good or important characters. Nyono Wan, E.T. Knockoff, uh, goes in D tier. I don't really care to see him again. I'm not a big fan of their design. I think Apple, again, could have some cool stuff in the future. Same with Kasuno, but I doubt Nyono Wan ever will. So yeah, I'm going to put him in D tier. I don't think they deserve to be in F tier, just because they're not like, they're not like bad. Um, let's see, who else do we have? Oh, random guy. I forget. He was on one of the teams. I forget which team that got taken out during a uh, crown game. Ah, his design's familiar, but I forget. Uh, Devil Bone. Devil Bone, just for the memes, I think belongs in D tier. And he did have kind of a role more than some of the randoms did in uh, Workshop Battle. So because of that... Around here? I don't know, he, he at least provided more laughs than Grand Ali, I suppose. Though Grand Ali's, like, comedic bits were pretty alright. I guess I can put him there for now and then decide a bit later. Um, Hots. Okay, here we go, another high tier one. Let's, let's do a couple high tier ones, maybe. Um, he's at least sweet, if not Secret Sauce. I think maybe he should be in Secret Sauce, but, I don't know, Kelhelm's down here. I'll put him between those two for right now, but he might move up a tier. So might Kelhelm. He might also move up a tier. I don't know. Uh, Death Karambit. I like all of Karaka's little servant dudes. Death Karambit's like the least notable of them, though. So he's going below Levy there. He's like less notable than here we are. Death Bird. Death Bird, the savior of, um, 
of uh, what was it? The last station. He got uh, some of the people out of there coming in clutch. Uh, Deathbird, I'm actually putting above Akrion, but I'll put, I'll put below Love. Okay, anybody else? The High Leech Monk was a pretty interesting little random whatever during the uh, Floor of Death. I would say they were cooler than Grandly, but they weren't as funny. They're not like Kasuno level in the storyline. Oh, they're better than Yono Wan, though. So yeah, they can go there. We have Didiano. I actually don't like Didiano, like, at all. Didiano, to me, the poop-throwing monkey, like, anima creature, the Shinhui, was not very cool. Um, I kind of felt like they were just a random distraction that wasn't even that impressive during the Evankel fight. Like, the Evankel fight could have proceeded the same with Elpathion and Lafav without Didiano even there. He didn't even really need to be in the story. And also, Dococo was around, who was much, much cooler, who will be much higher on the list. So actually, Didiano might be going top of effing terrible tier. I did not like them, but I don't have, like, that strong of an opinion on not liking them. Uh, Boro, I really like. Boro goes A tier. Above Prince. I don't... Because uh, when Boro first showed up, I thought he was amazing. I thought he was so great. But I don't like the way his character randomly changed into a into a comic relief character, like part of the way through. So that's why I'm I'm struggling. When it comes to the future, I'm excited to see a lot with Boro, but like at the present right now during this arc, I almost feel like I might be more excited for Kan Hong. So right now I think that might be a good spot. A uh, random dude that got taken out that was part of Levin's team can go in who Ah, uh, let's see. Novik I love. Novik is a great character. Deserves the A tier at least. Um, Novik can be top of A tier for now. Might even move up to S tier. Barrow Barrow belongs in B. Uh, Vero Vero is good. I like Vero Vero. She's not that important, but I like her. Um, and I'm excited to see more of her and uh, Irure in the future. Even more so than I think love. Ah. Uh, I might put her there, because I do, I, I do actually like Delete a lot. Um, let's see, any more? Grom. Grom can go in C tier. Better than Death Garambit and Levy. Not as good as Hachonti. Let's see. Chang. I love Chang. Hopefully he's still alive and CU didn't do, do him this dirty. Uh, yeah, I guess that's good. Because if he is if he is gone and there's no future for him, then these characters all deserve more, even though there's no future for that one either, probably. Um, but I liked him a lot more than I liked Prince. Uh, goes in the Who, the H14 and H23, I think they were. Um, was that Chung Chung? Is that this character's name? I get some of them confused. Uh, but yeah, just a random character that got taken out. Uh, this guy's another random one that got taken out. Same with this one. Just getting some of those out of the way. Dorian Frog I like. Not that much, but I do like. And I want to see more of Dorian Frog in the future. Uh, not as much as Jonhi. Not as much as Grom. Not even as much as Levy. So Dorian Frog can go there. I love the Will slash Warhammer weapon, though. It's really cool looking. And also, I don't think Dorian... I've always thought Dorian was a guy, but I could be wrong on Dorian's gender, so sorry there if I'm wrong. But I always thought Dorian was a guy. It's hard to tell in Tower of God sometimes. Uh, Enryu, one of my favorite stories from the lore. I want to see a lot more of them. Enryu goes S tier. Not, like, we haven't seen enough from Enryu to be above them, I think. But Enryu is one of my favorite lore characters. Um, let's see, who else do we have here? Poro Po. I didn't really like Po that much at first. I kind of feel like he was a bit shoehorned in to the sort of Boros team past storyline, but I don't dislike him. I do think he's probably below average, though. He's not as good as Charlie. Like, at least in the comedic sense, I think Charlie's better. 
And I might even put him below Grey, because Grey had a neat design. She was neat in Season 1, especially the anime showed her a little bit more, I think. Uh, so I don't know. I doubt we're ever going to see her again, but still. Then again, I don't know if we'll ever see Piropo again. Is this... is this Chagrinsky? I cannot tell. I think it might be. Chagrinsky is hilarious for his name alone, and he had some pretty good comedic bits. It was cool when he got taken out by uh, Hatsu. I don't know, he's, again, a character that it's fun to meme on, so maybe there. He doesn't have the negative stuff attached that Kasuno does, but he's also, he's, he's not a good character. He's just a character that you can laugh about. Uh, I don't even really recognize this guy from Season 1. Uh, Chatanoa, I liked. Again, people are going to be like, why are you giving her an actual rank? Because she just showed up and got destroyed. But I loved her design. It's good. She's good enough to put in C, er, in C tier just from that. Uh, more than Karambit, actually, even. Akraptor, one of my favorite characters. Sadly, we're not going to see any more from him personally, but we still have his daughter storyline going on. Um, I would put him all the way up here, because before losing Akraptor, he was one of my favorites. And even now, I think he might be the only character to earn a posthumous spot on my favorite characters list. So I'm going to put him there for now. Uh, K. K is hilarious as a meme character. Um, like, because K is a character you're not really supposed to take serious to begin with. But he's really funny the way he's always like, yeah, I'm going to pick a fight. And then he just immediately gets absolutely destroyed. Um, that was funny every time he was brought back. And also, there, he said that he is supposed to be engaged in an arranged marriage into the Yeon family. So if that is Yiwa, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We could actually potentially see more of him in the future as, again, a comedic antagonist. So because of that... He's actually going above Chatanwa. Again, he has just potential as just a funny character. He's not, like, bad. Uh, let's see. This is a random guy, I think, from Workshop Battle, but I don't really remember. A uh, random guy from Season 1. Random guy from Season 1. Uh, Tulalan goes... I think Tulalan goes in effing terrible just from this character that was introduced, and when they were first introduced, they're like... Okay, you're going to be, um, they're like, oh, this is one of the Wal Hike Song regulars. He's actually affiliated with Wal Hike Song. Oh, you're going to be climbing the Hell Train, right? Oh, yeah, I am. And then, like, we never ever see them again. So because of that, I think they go even below Dang Dang. If I'm not getting that wrong, I'm pretty sure that's Tulalan. Uh, oh, no, no, it's not. That's, um, oh, wait, yes, it is. That's Tulalan. I, I was getting him f confused with... Uh, I don't remember... Li Jia... Li Jia Wun. No, that was the guy with the missing legs. Li Jia Wun's son. You know who I'm talking about from Last Station? That's who I was getting this guy confused with. Uh, let's go for some high tier ones here with Angel. Angel goes at least in A tier. At least above Prince. Prince maybe should go down to top of B tier for now. Um, we have a Dory. I, I always say that one of the characters I'm most excited to see is um, Grace Marche Leslie. And aside from that, a lot of the Slayers in FUG, I'm interested in seeing more of the family heads for sure. But two of the princesses that I really, really want to see in the story, I want to see a Dory and I want to see Arie Hagaferion. So I'm really, I'm really excited to see a Dory. And I think she could go at the bottom of A tier just from the little we know about her from the lore and how much I want to see her show up in the story. Uh, Yurure, kind of D tier. I mean, better than those two, I guess. It was just a random art character to serve as Yurure's uh, sworn enemy. I think that's a decent place. They had a decent design. Again, just whatever. D for decent. Uh, Jeez, Amigo Chaz would be much higher up if we saw him more, but we, like, never see Amigo Chaz. Even when we see Shibisu's team, we never see Amigo Chaz. But he still goes above some of these other characters. He's still above Chagrinsky, above Apple. 
He's he's like not great. He's not really even average, but he's all right. I think that's fair for now. I might move some of these around in the future. Oh, we have Mata. Mata was such a good art character that didn't really need fights or physical stuff, just character stuff. Um, Mata was really good with. So I would say almost up here, maybe. Again, I might move these around a little bit. Let's see, where am I at with time? Sorry for the... <clears throat> Sorry for the weird jump cut. I just wanted to uh, go ahead and save the 35 minutes we had recorded so far. So, still got a lot left. Jeez. Uh, Powler, I can put in Hoot here. I think that's Powler, at least. One of the guys that probably got one shot by White. I feel like almost all of those guys got one shot by White. Uh, the Emperor Fist guy was a funny comedic guy, but he can just go in Hoot here. Uh, because who cares? That was... Was that Gunter? I don't remember. I think he was one of the gamblers during um, during workshop battle. That was Groban, one of the random guys from Team Mad Dog. Uh, this guy, random guy from Season 1, I believe. I think he was the one that kept sucking up to Andrasi, right? Uh, Grande Ja? Grande Ja, I believe, is this one. I thought his comedic stuff was good. I didn't like his design at first because I was expecting it to be more serious, but it's actually kind of grown on me, the like cartoonishness of it. So I think he can go in C tier. He was just a whatever arc character. Daniel, I loved. I don't think we're going to see more of him. If we don't, I'm fine with it. If we do, I'm fine with it. But I actually loved him as a character when he was around. So again, maybe somewhere around there. Uh, Kanzone I really loved as an art character, at least B tier. Better than those guys, not better than Prince, I would say. Uh, we have Joaquin, I wonder if him and White are counted separately in here, so I'll leave him out for now. Uh, we had this random guy, I think from Workshop Battle. Uh, Gietang, we didn't, Gietang we hardly knew ye, but uh, Gietang wasn't bad. Ooh, a very, very high tier one. One of my favorite characters with Kaiser. Mm, somewhere somewhere in here, again, going to maybe put those in order a little later on. Just putting them in tiers for now, for the most part. Akka, I really liked as an art character. Not as much as Daniel, but I did like as an art character. Uh, let's see, Anna, kind of the same. I actually think that I might put Anna in A tier. I really liked her design when we got to see her fight against Sachi's group and the bunny like transformed into this like humanoid form and was like using a sword or some kind of needle weapon I think. No, the bunny was using a sword. I liked that instead of being a swordsman herself she was like this puppet master controlling the puppet who was a swordsman. I actually really like that concept. So I kind of a part of me, even though White is like my favorite character, I would love to see him split into the individual parts just so we could get more of characters like Anna and Vicente and the Albelda clone. So yeah, maybe around there for right now, but I might drop her a tier later. Okay, so Garam, again, a really enjoyable art character that I'd like to see more of in the future. Uh, maybe somewhere around there for right now. A lot of people might be upset that I'm not putting her higher, but I don't think she's, like, super amazing. Anak. I don't know what tier Anak deserves to be in. It's so, so difficult to place Anak. Just because it's one of these situations where when she was in the story, like, Workshop Battle and especially Season 1, she was, like, the best. And then we just haven't seen a single thing from her since then. And even though that's the case, I still really, really like her character. Just from, like, the memories, the good times. Uh, I'll put her in S for right now and think about where she belongs in there later, I guess. Uh, Sachi, I also really, really like. I'm going to put him around the same place and, again, figure out where in this upper section he belongs a bit later. Um, then there's Hanayu. I actually... Even though she was barely there, I love Hanayu's design, I liked her backstory, and I was so disappointed that we never got to see her again, and still am. I still want her to show up at some point in the future. 
I want to put her, like, even up here. I want to see her return even more than Barrow Barrow. Um, we got Jin Sung. Jin Sung is great. He's a, a really, really good mentor character who I think is... I don't know, he's kind of serving the role that most shonen mentor characters do, but he's doing it really well. So I would I would put him up somewhere around here. Maybe maybe move him up a little in the future, but we'll see. Inietta I thought was alright. The thing about Inietta, even though I thought Inietta was alright, his fight, his fight with um with Ron was so good. And his character kind of kind of hinges on that fight alone. So I think I'm gonna put him here for right now. Uh, another random guy. I know Rack fought him in the anime from season one. Uh, Haruda. I'm gonna put Haruda in who just cause like we have seen him so little that I legitimately have no opinion. Uh, Hess was actually pretty neat. Um, he was the first 10 boss we got introduced to. He had an interesting power. His fight with Ron was pretty good, though not as good as Inietta's, of course. So yeah, he's actually... I don't think Hess is that bad. Um, I'll put below Chatanawa. Uh, head on. It's hard to judge head on. We, don't, we haven't seen enough of him. From what we have seen, I would say A tier, but I don't, I don't really know where around A tier. Um, Augustus... We, again, haven't seen much of him, but I love his design. I love the way that they used the storyline of him being a part of F.U.G. as, like, part of him convincing Love to come join this uh, thing now. How he influenced Love to get him to see Bomb and be like, oh, he's an F.U.G. Slayer candidate, but he's not that bad a guy. And how he played sort of love hating both F.U.G. and the Zahard family. I think that, I don't know, that aspect of him is really cool. Again, his design's great, his power's really cool. Uh, so he'll, he'll go somewhere in A tier, for now. Uh, random guy, Miss Sai Strawberry's partner. I want to see more of him, but we haven't really seen much of any of him. Miss Sai Strawberry yourself, same deal. I really want to see more of these two. But I think for now, I can't really form an opinion on them. Who was... Oh yeah, this was one of the ones that... She was Holly or something, right? They got taken out by White. Death Lady, the goat. At least A tier. Somewhere in A tier. Um, um, somewhere around here-ish, maybe, for now. Uh, let's see what else we got. Red Hair. Red here is a random nobody that got taken out by Rakaku Kukaku Rakawaka. That guy. Um, where is he? By the way, he should be somewhere in here. Either way. Uh, there's Metapod guy, who also got punched in the face by Blarus in the anime. Uh, another random one taken out. Random one taken out by Hatsu. Uh, just trying to pick some of those out if I can. Is this uh, Rodney from... Um, uh, just reading from behind him from uh, Workshop Battles Gambling. He was one of the gamblers. There's Rakaku Kukaka Raka Raka. Um, I'll, I'll put him in Who just because, again, we barely saw him. I don't plan to ever see him again. But still, he's at least memorable for the name. Uh, we've got, I believe this is Dukoko. I would put Dukoko in A tier. I think Dukoko's a really interesting art character, even though he wasn't around for long. What he showed off, his powers were really, really, really cool, and I thought his fight was really good. Uh, the conclusion of it was really good. Like, everything about Dukoko's part in the recent, like, current Nest arc is really, really good. So, from here, we've got, oh gosh, just a bunch of important characters, but we've also got Kel, who is just knockoff Batis. I don't really plan to see anything great from Kel either. Kel can go in effing terrible. Not that bad though, because again, they could always have a cool story or something, but I just know them as discount Bottas. Um, uh, again, this guy, was he... Was he Chung Chung or was he Liron 3? I don't remember which is which. He might have been Liron 3. Uh, Nanotona I like. I want to see more of Nanotona. I like their design and their attitude. Then go and see for now. 
uh, Ha Yurin, again, want to see more. The one, we've barely seen them. The lore can carry them a little bit, but the little we've seen of them I thought was really, really cool. Uh, let's see who else we've got here. Uh, random guy. The random guy can go in who, I, I remember him, but I don't really remember him. I mean, I know he was from the part, like the team tournament part of um, Workshop Battle, but that's about it. Oh, we have Pompido. Pompido was hilarious. He served a decent role in the story. Pompido can maybe go B tier, but he might get knocked down a little bit later. Hax was just randomly shown at the beginning, but I mean, she was the fisherman instructor. I think she could maybe go in average for now. Uh, was this? Oh God, what was his name? I always forget him. I always, he is actually, that's the doctor guy, right? Oh my God, what is his name? I always, always, Hanul Kang. I always forget who Hanul Kang is. He is the face of Hu tier. He was with us for arcs and arcs and arcs, and yet I can never, oh no. That's not even him. That's Hanul King, right? What? Why? I am I am blown away. They're both going in Hoot here. This guy's also going in Hoot here. Um, Felix. I want to see more Felix, but Felix was kind of whatever. I can just put Felix in D tier. Um, let's see here. Oh, Marte. Was that her name? The octopus woman? Effing terrible. I hate her design. hate everything about her. She's below Tulalan. Alright, who else do we have here? We've got Red Greymon, I think. This is Red Greymon, right? He was the one who was part of the group infiltrating Kaiser's Palace, but we didn't really ever get to see him again. Honestly, Honestly, he was a decent enough character that I'd just put in average. Or actually, he didn't really ever get developed any. I'll put him in D tier for now. Um, let's see here. We've got... I don't remember who this is. Was this another random member of Zahard's army? I think it might have been. But then, no, I'm, am I thinking of Powler? Ah, gosh, I really don't know. Uh, either way, though, I think I'm actually going to take a break from recording this and come back later when my voice isn't dying so much. That way that you'll get me, like, at full energy. Um, but yeah, I've been recording this for almost an hour. I'm going to save it where it is now. And then I'll come back to it and continue it tomorrow and kind of finish it off. Again, these are just a lot of characters. So yeah, I'll come back to this full energy next time. Right now, currently standing at our top, our secret sauce, is um, Shibisu, Yama, Warian, and Elaine. Though I guess I don't even really need to say this to you all, because you all are just going to see, like, bam, like, instant transmission into me wearing a different shirt, sitting in the same place, doing the same thing. But either way, uh, yeah, let's jump cut to that transition. <laughs> 